Hello, welcome back. Now we're going to have a look at how to attack with isolated pawn. So, let's have a look at this typical structure. White has a pawn on d4 and black has a pawn on e6. And let's take a moment here. I want to talk about the general plans and then we'll see the examples. So, we can see that the d4 pawn controls the e5 and c5 squares. So usually the knight gets on e5 and the white has good attacking chances. So there is another typical idea with breakthrough on d5 and a very good attacking motives like well, kingside uh, attack possibilities like the f7 sacrifice when the e6 pawn is very weak, the rook transfer to the king side, the bishop and the queen battery on h7, and the c file attacking on the queen side. So, let's start with a very good example, um, but Vinik Vidmar game. Here we can see that the knight is already on e5 and white pieces are all developed. So, black's last move was knight b4 and queen h3. I like this move very much because now we can see how strong the queen is on h3 and it has a combined attack on e6 pawn and the knight on e5 is also very good attacking the f7 pawn. Black has to blockade the d5, bishop d5, knight d5 and Knight bd5 was played in the game. Well, if knight f d5, bishop goes to c1, well, it is important not to exchange the pieces because all kind of exchanges are in black's favor. So rook c8 and white still has some attacking chances. This knight on b4 is not doing anything and white has a slight edge. So, knight bd5, and a typical isolated pawn attacking move, f4. The idea is f5. Rook c8 was played in the game. If g6, not to allow f5, it doesn't work because of bishop h6, rook e8, and bishop a4. And now we can see that black's rook on e8 is in a big trouble. If knight e4, black wants to exchange the pieces, there is a very good typical sacrifice on f7. So what is the idea of knight f7? If, okay, bishop g5, we know that it's not possible because of knight d8, so rook f7, sorry, rook f7, queen e6, and now we see the great pin, queen attacks on d5 knight and on e4 knight as well. And if king f7 protecting the e6 pawn, then after rook d e8, black cannot really defend the e4 knight and the e6 pawn at the same time. So if knight g5, f takes g5, king g8 and queen e6 still gets the piece back. 
So, let's get back to the game. F4, Rook C8, and F5. Ef5 should be played. If Queen d6, then White just takes on e6, Knight c4, and attacks the e6 pawn. So Ef5, Rook f5, Queen d6, and again a typical sacrifice on f7, Knight f7. This is a big problem when the Knight is on d5, the Bishop on b3 pins the knight on d5 and after rook f7, bishop f6. Now we can see the perfect placement of the queen on h3 because it mysteriously attacks the c8 rook as well. So after knight f6 there is a rook f6, bishop f6 and queen c8. And after bishop f6, rook d5, double attack, queen c6, rook d6, black cannot take on d6 because of queen c8, queen f8 and a simple rook c1 wins. So queen e8 and rook d7, white one. Let's go to next example. I'm oh, sorry. And here we have the game of Neverov Maximenko. Here, white plates a natural move, knight e5. Bishop c6 was played, so if castle, then there is again the transfer. Queen f3 goes to h3, bishop c6, queen h3, and queen d4 is not possible because of Typical sacrifice on f7, knight f7, king f7 is not possible because of queen e6 and rook f7 is also bad because of queen e6 and pinning the rook on f7. So bishop c6 was played and f4 attacking. f5 is the idea and now we can see that the bishop on b3 is perfect attacking the f7. Castle, f5. Ef5, rook f5. Now the knight in the center is very good attacking the f7 and the bishop also keeps an eye on f7. So black of course wants to cover this diagonal, knight f5, bishop e7, queen e7, Queen d3 was played, white just continues to attack, rook a d8, rook a f1, f6. And now white ignored this threat after f6, uh, black attacks on e5, and rook h5. We can see that queen d3 attacks the h7 pawn and black is in trouble. Maximenko played g5. g6 didn't help because of knight g6, hg and queen g6. Queen g7 is only move but after queen f5 there is another rook coming on g5 and white is winning. So, g5, knight g4. Now we see that the king on g8 is very weak and all our pieces are very well placed. Rook d7, h4, g h4, knight e3. White transfers the knight on f5 and black is just hopeless. Let's go to another example and here we have the game of Dlagi All. So, black wants knight c4, natural response knight e5, rook c8, black still wants knight c4, queen d3, 
we can see a great battery of the bishop and the queen and queen c7. So black here again wants knight c4, rook f d8 and just to develop white's played bishop g5. It's a provo provocating move because the threat is now bishop f6 and queen h7 mate. So black has to play g6 and again we see the perfect transfer, transfer of the queen on h3. Queen on h3 is very well placed, attacks the e6 pawn very mysteriously because there are always, actually black has to be very careful of these sacrifices on f7. After knight d5, bishop h6, knight c3, bishop f8, bishop f8, bc3, queen c3. Of course, white doesn't want to change the pieces, so bishop d3. Here, black had a chance to play knight b3 and keep a good compensation for exchange. And after rook a d8 take with the knight on d4, but okay, again, there is a nice sacrifice on f7, but of course it's not killing queen h7, bishop g7 and queen g6 with a very unclear position. But black here got very greedy, taking the d4 pawn with the queen. And now, again, the typical sacrifice on f7, knight f7. We can see that the king is overloaded, defending two pawns on h7 and f7. So when white takes on f7, now we see how weak are the pawns on e6, g6, h7. So after king f7, rook a d8. The threat is bishop g6 to win the queen on d4. Queen f6. Well, queen g7 is not possible to protect h7 uh, pawn because of the mate. So queen f6, queen h7, bishop g7, bishop g6, king e7, and bishop f5. We see that the pawn on e6 is pinned and white wins this pawn. And if rook c6, rook e3. With the idea of doubling the rooks. And if queen h6, queen g8. Again, attack on e6. And let's see that these pieces are completely out of play. Knight on a5 is not doing anything and the king on d8 is really in trouble because there are many many threats and if bishop f8, bishop e4, rook c4, bishop g6 with an avoidable threat on f7 and e6. So let's see another example and here white did everything. Knight is on e5 they, uh, the pieces are developed, bishop on g5, but this rook is not on f1, so there is no typical ideas with f4, f5, because the rook is already on d1. So what can be another idea? Another idea is to bring the rook into attack on king's side. Rook d3. So, if black gets greedy here, thinking that he can win a pawn after knight b4, rook g3 and queen d4, he gets into a sacrifice, in typical sacrifice on f7. Knight f7. 
Rook f7, queen e6, pinning the rook on, if, on f7, and if black covers the diagonal, then after rook d1, he cannot defend so many pieces. All is pinned. So, king f7 and queen e6. King e8, rook d1, attacking the queen, queen b6, bishop e3, queen c7 and rook g7 with a horrible attack. So, in the game of Furman Garris, queen d6 was played, rook d one rook f d8, and rook, G, uh, rook h3. Now we see that white has many ideas. To transfer the bishop on c2, and black here played g6. Here, for one made a wrong move. Bishop c1. The idea of Furman was to bring the queen into attack, but I think he could not uh, foresee that the bishop going on f8 just defends it. So rook a c8, queen d2, and knight h5 was played in the game, and after rook h5, g h5, knight e4, white won the game. But of course, bishop f8 was with very unclear position. But let's see what Furman missed here. Now we see that still these pawns on f7 and h7 are weak. Bishop d5. Why to exchange? Because the pieces are not good. If bishop d5, there is queen e3. Now we know that bishop f6 and queen h6 is the threat. Just because the knight on d5 is no more there, so e3 square is free, and also the knight on f6 is not defended. I mean, it's defended only with the bishop. So bishop cannot go on um, f8. If knight d5, knight f7. Again, great sacrifice. If king f7, then there is knight e4, and king g8, king, rook e7, of course, knight f6 is coming. So, knight c3, bc3, queen d5, and f4. Protecting the g2 pawn, and of course, everything is hanging. After king f7, there is rook h7. And if e d5, then rook e3. Now the idea is knight c6, and if bishop f8, well, rook e8 doesn't work because of queen f3, and we see that knight c6, rook e7 at some point, well, we shouldn't blunder the mate on first rank, but the queen transfers into attack and uh, Black is in big trouble. So, bishop f8, bishop f6, queen f6, and rook f3 is completely winning for white. Let's go to another example. And, sorry, here we have a typical position of sacrificing on g6. So, we'll quickly go with the moves here bishop h6, rook e8, a3 knight c6 and knight g6. Well, hg should be played, bishop g6, another sacrifice on g6, af takes g6, and queen b1. Now the queen, white brings the queen into attack, knight e5 does not help because of d5, knight e4, knight e4, and white is not pieced down and uh, they have mating uh, attack. Let's see the next example 
which one which uh, shows the typical idea of bishop and queen battery. So it was the game of Korchnoi Lubuevich, and after bishop b1, a6, queen d3, great battery, g6, bishop d2. White attacks, queen f5, and queen e3. The queen is still attacked, and after queen h5, of course we don't want to exchange on h6, and knight e5, a natural move, and now we can see how good the pieces are standing. a b5 was played in the game, but after bishop a5, Bishop a5, queen f4, white has a great attack. And let's go to the last example, which shows the queen side attack and using the c file. This is a great example of Karpov Galler, so Karpov played here, knight b5. Now we see that the rook is in trouble and it has to exchange itself, so rook c1, rook c1, knight d5, controlling the c7 square, knight a7. Actually, white, okay, brings the knight to c6, so knight b4 was played and a3, queen a8, and here, okay, a b, queen a7 is very complicated because the b4 pawn is still hanging and Karpov played a great move here, rook c7 and on knight d5, rook b7 and we see that all pieces are protected and white, white is just pawn up so after bishop h6, knight c6 Everything is uh, protected, rook c8 and knight e5 with a winning position and after some moves Karpov won this game very nicely. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in part 2. We will have another structure of isolated pawn when the pawn is on c6. See you! Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending, and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.